Okay, I'm on, right? Okay, yes, good. So I'm going to give another experience report called Bootstrapping a Project with Elm. And uh, I, I'm Erland. I work for a consultancy called Blank, and it will be kind of relevant, actually. I'm E. Hamburg on Twitter. You can safely follow me. I almost never post. All good. And I'm definitely here to learn. I mean, I'm so often this I have no idea what I'm doing dog when it comes to Elm. So this is, this is my and my team's experience. So this presentation is off to a really bad start. But uh, actually, the first time I heard about Elm was in 2013, I think, when I went to Strange Loop. And I met this super nice guy who gave an awesome demo, like really, really cool. And we talked after, his name was Evan, and we went out for beers. <laughs> and he was like super into Haskell and type inference, and we were just like having really, really nerdy discussions that just degraded over beers. And it was super awesome. And but I mean it was niche language, and I mean it was cool. And then I just forgot about it. But then I, I, I used to work with a guy who was like really like backend heavy guy, Erlang and uh, C, and he started getting into front and just because we needed it in the startup I worked for. And I just remember him just telling me, like, front end is really, really, really hard. And that kind of stuck with me because, I mean, super smart guy, done all these things, and, like, front end is super hard. And he got into Elm because he thought, like, this is an amazing, like, uh, solution in this design space. So that kind of just stuck with me for a long time. So... That's the backstory. So for our consultancy, we had this project we dreamt up called Falk, which is really weird saying in English, but it's fine, which uh, we imagined to be a marketplace for consultants and, well, companies wanting to hire consultants. So, I mean, I really shouldn't say Airbnb for consultants, but yeah, <laughs> you get the point. So, I mean, this has tons of like interesting design decisions, like actual design and all the stuff around, but I'm, I'm here to talk about the technical stuff, like Elm context. But this is what we imagine it would be. I mean, this is actually what it is. So you can search, filter by technologies, roles, and so on, and you can open a profile, and you can request like an interview or just download their CVs and so on. So this is like the, the big point. I mean, this is where we're going. So we just kind of sat back and like, OK, so what will, we, what will we need to do to build this? So first of all, being a consultancy changes the parameters quite a bit. So. <coughs> We're mainly doing like consultancy work for external customers, which implies there will be lots of rotation in the team. I mean, um, a developer can be gone in just a few days, and maybe a new developer comes in, and uh, there will be like downtime in the project. Maybe everyone is working with customers and so on. So this really shapes how you plan a project, and it will have an effect. And also, like the project itself, uh, I mean, being just a project means, well, there will be changing requirements. We weren't like crystal clear on what we wanted to do. And also, I mean, we we're building an MVP, but what's an MVP? What, what feature will we keep? Or what will we, will we throw out in the first version and so on? And we knew this would change. And we knew it would be super like front end heavy. And we wanted to do as little backend stuff as possible, just because we want to validate this. We don't want to like build the first perfect version and actually ship it. So why Elm? We knew we would see like lots and lots of refactorings. I mean, all the time. We just knew it from experience and from like this special project. I mean, we kind of just could see it coming. Uh, there was a of JavaScript fatigue. I mean, most of us were, if not new to front-end development, we have only done it for maybe a year or two. Most of us had done uh, React, 
for me, I had just been like out on a six-month uh, consultancy gig. I came back to a, a React project. I wanted to do some major new features and also hopefully upgrade the React version, which was, I mean, I just hated my former self for writing such bad tests because I did the upgrade and I did not trust the new, I mean, the new code. I, I just like, what, what's the difference between React, I don't know, something 15 and 17, I don't remember the versions. So I kind of like went through the list and like updated stuff, but in the end I was just like, I, I don't trust this at all, with good reason it turned out. But yeah. Uh, people said it was easy to learn, which is kind of important because of like the team rotation, new people coming in and so on. So that's really good. And for us it was really, I mean, that we could like drop down to JS, like using ports for stuff that we couldn't do in Elm was really, I mean, it was just good to know. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, it, it made it easier to choose Elm. But there wasn't like a super conscious long process of evaluating like frameworks. It was just like, let's try Elm. I mean, we all kind of thought it could work. So we decided to just go with it. So, the like team of developers was only like one guy with like Elm experience and functional programming, kind of implies functional programming. This guy, just no functional programming, not Elm. That's me. This guy who was a Java developer had never done any front end. Uh, I mean, he he had, but it was called JSP, and I still don't really know what it is. Uh, but yeah, he was like new to this. And a bit later, we also had a, a, a new graduate joining the team who had, hadn't really done any front-end programming. So that, that's an interesting like starting team, I would say. So we just went with it, and we started on our, on our first version. We created a super simple Elm single page application. We did not want to build a backend, so we outsourced kind of the, the profile hosting, the CV generation to a, a service that does this. So our Elm app just said, hey, give me the profiles. We got our profiles back, and we rendered them. And it was fine, mostly, but this service was never meant to be like an HTTP API. It actually had a front end itself that was meant to use. So the, I mean, the JSON we got was interesting. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is nothing. <laughs> so in the beginning, we just kind of felt like we were just writing decoders all the time and just getting annoyed with the data. So that was like, I put a real damper like, to, to like early progress, which is, which is annoying. I mean, you, you want to get something up and running really fast. So after like working on this for a long time, we actually ended up introducing our own data massager module. And all it did was just like the, the request would go through this. This would get the data back, the interesting data. And we were just like, OK, let's just massage this in this backend piece. I mean, we didn't want a backend, but hey. So which, I mean, this helped a lot. And we were, well, after the races, as someone said, I mean, we actually had a working prototype. Everything was fine. We were mostly happy. Uh, the, the guy who ended up writing most of the decoder code was the Java guy. He, he is a very patient, patient guy. Uh, but I don't think it was an, an amazing introduction to functional programming for him. So I felt kind of bad. So, I just, so finally, we could start doing like real stuff. Um, so mostly happy. Um, we did use quite a few like escape hatches. Uh, like just, I mean, this is just a grep of like ports. Uh, some of these make sense, I think. Some are just like uh, we have some working JavaScript. Let's just like get this up and running. So we were mostly happy. Things were fine, and. Then uh, I just went away for, I don't know, a couple of days or something, and I came back. 
think I remember this correctly, and disaster had struck. Someone, so, someone introduced this Elm CSS stuff, and it made no sense to me. It was just like, why, why, why? Actually, it's really cool. Uh, it was just like really caught me by surprise seeing all these types in my CSS and just spreading out through the code base. And uh, this actually, I mean, we, we kept it because it's awesome. It's, uh, it's so nice to have like your horrible spelling like caught instead of just uh, a property missing somewhere. And uh, yeah, I think we're mostly happy with it. Uh, it's slightly annoying not be able to just like go to like dev tools, like modify stuff, just copy the updated CSS and like have it done. You kind of have to translate it to Elm CSS. But yeah, I think we're mostly happy with it. But it did make Elm like more different. So people just like looking at the project were like, oh, what's this extra layer of, of new stuff? But it's all good. Um, another thing, I mean, I think everyone mentioned this, but like Elm format is infuriating. It's, I mean, I, I have my artisanally crafted code, like beautiful, and it just comes and just tramples all over it. So first week, not very happy. In the end, I, I don't think, uh, I mean, I would never do without it. It's awesome, and I miss it in every other language that doesn't have it. And I hope it never gets any configuration. It's a terrible idea. <laughs> so. Um, so, I mean, we were kind of doing good. So after the first weeks, we have something up and running. We felt we quickly got up to speed, mostly. Um, our, our new graduate picked it up like super fast. Uh, I, I, I mean, I was just terrible. I just told him like, yeah, we use this stuff called Elm. Just go and check it out and just start working. And it worked, which is crazy. Um, the JSON decoding like was kind of a pain until we, at least until we introduced our like data massager. Um, the error messages were kind of daunting to our poor decoder writer. And uh, yeah, Elm CSS, awesome. And most importantly, we refactored all the time because we could never make up our minds and people had different ideas and they were good ideas and we changed stuff all the time. And that was like the most important part. So the app kept growing and we kind of felt a need to split things up and we know that we, I mean, you never say modularizations or components around Elm people for some reason. I mean, we didn't really know why back then. So we did some like test of like, okay, how do we split this up? So we split pages, mo oh, well, we mostly split by pages. So we ended up with this like hierarchy of like the, the login, like view has uh, its types and view and its update function and so on. Which, I, I don't know, uh, we, that's what we still have, but I don't know if it's turned out to be a good idea. And uh, I'm super excited to see stuff like the, um, the uh, Richard's uh, like single page uh, example app, because that's something we want to revis revisit at some point, basically. Another thing we ended up doing was ending up with like, I mean, there always comes a point in a project where you create like utils module, which feels bad, but it's fine. And uh, we have, and, and I mean, maybe these should be called like extras or something. So we've had like to add like small stuff to like list and uh, dict and so on. Sometimes because we knew a function from Haskell or F Sharp or Elixir, there's like ah, oh, this would be perfect here. So. And which is super nice because we just import utils as list as list, and we just have extra functions on list. That's a pattern that we actually ended up quite liking. Um, but I mean, they're specific to the project, which is, I guess it's fine. But um, a pain point that we still have, kind of, is <sighs> so we were most of us were used to JSX. It's just I mean, it has good and bad sides. But 
One thing I, I still struggle with is if I have like a huge view, which m may be the problem here, and I just want to like move this DOM node over here. I mean, want to move it a layer up because of some making CSS styling simpler or different or something. I, I mean, I don't mind. I, I used to like Lisp a lot, but balancing these like trees and just like picking out a piece and moving it up, I always get it wrong. I, I, I get something wrong. Elm format really helps because it will just like align stuff crazily, but I, I, I don't still like see the view here, and I've been doing it for a while now, so. Um, another thing, which is maybe just me, but I, I really, really miss typed holes, which is a feature that maybe, I don't know, maybe only Haskell has, but I, I mean, I, I miss it so much, because in Haskell I can see, I can just say, like, I, I mean, I just, what the hell, I, I, I don't know, just tell me what to put here. And the Haskell compiler will basically say, just, I found this hole, and it has the types response to CV because I'm going to return CV, and I have some HTTP response, which you can kind of emulate in Elm, and I, I, I do that, but I don't know, I really miss this. But Please tell me if, if there's a good way to do this. Um, another thing, I, so I, I mentioned our data massager, which, I mean, we didn't want a backend. We now have a backend. That implies a few things. So for, for the backend, I just went to what I know, which is Haskell and, and a library called Servant, which is pretty cool. So uh, don't worry about the details here, but I mean, Servant is basically a description of, of the API that, that we serve from our backend, which, I mean, again, it only like the first work to the other like third-party service and just massages the data. But this is our API. I mean, this is what the API we use from use um, by our app. And a really cool feature that you get from Servant is um, Elm code generation. So based on this, Servant can get, generate the types for your Elm project, and it can generate the decoders and client functions. So you'll get stuff like, okay, skill set is a, is, a, um, is a subtype of a profile, and you get a decoder for it, which looks more or less what I would have written myself. And maybe most importantly, you get a, a function get profiles, takes a URL base, and an authorization token, basically because it just like inspected the API and saw that that's, that's what you needed, which I, I don't really know how I can get away with this. It feels like some things just fall apart because now all our decoders are just auto-generated, which is pretty cool because, I mean, that means that when I change the data format in the backend server, the front end freaking doesn't compile, which is amazing. I mean, this ah, like fist pump moment, because every time I change data and it's incompatible with the front end, it just like stops compiling, because its its API layer is auto generated by the back end, which I kind of just fell into. I mean, it was just because we didn't like the data format, so we write this we wrote this this uh, Haskell server. I don't know if I mean, I would seriously consider just specifying the API in Servant, even if I didn't have a Haskell backend server, just to get this, but maybe I'm crazy. <laughs> so basically, we, I mean, we have, it's, it's not like uh, publicly launched yet, but I mean, we've worked on this for half a year now, and most importantly, we have refactored many, many times, and that's, when I, I mean, I ask people about Elm, I mean, or my team, that's what they say. I mean, it's, it's super nice being able to, to actually refactor and, and actually know that it will probably work. We were produ productive really quickly. And most importantly, we're still really like learning as we go. Please come talk to me about all the terrible mistakes we've done and how we should do stuff. It's all good. Thank you.